Hello everyone and welcome back to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? It's so nice to meet you. Are you ready to sing our good morning song together? Let's stretch our arms out like airplane wings and fly to one side, fly to the other side, fly back to the middle, and now take your airplane wings into a big circle out in front of you like this. Can you stretch the circle up over your head and then stretch to one side? Nice stretching, friends. Stretch over to the other side. One last stretch up at the top and we'll bring the circle back down and sing together. It goes like this. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Thanks for singing with me and I hope that you all are having a wonderful morning so far. So before we get started with the calendar and weather chart, there are three things that we have to do. First, let's turn on our listening ears. Next, we need to put on our thinking hats. You look for your thinking hat and I will look for my thinking hat. My thinking hat is right here in front of me. I'm going to take it and put it on top of my head. And today my thinking hat has a big ribbon that I'm going to tie into a bow underneath my chin. The third and final thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts like this. Boom, 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 boom. And now we're ready to start circle time. Behind me, I have the calendar and weather chart. First, we are going to go over the date. And when we say the date, we begin with the month. The month is right up here. Do you know what the month is? May. The month is May. And today is May 19th. So I'm going to move the chip over from yesterday. Yesterday was May 18th. And today is May 19th, 2021. But you can also say that the year is 2021. Friends, will you say the date with me one more time? Today is May 19th, 2021 or 2021. Now, as you can see, the month of May is already almost over. We are more than halfway through the month of May. So instead of counting the days that we've already had in the month of May, let's use our counting fingers and let's count the remaining days or the days that are left in the month of May. So get those counting fingers ready and give them a little stretch to warm them up. After today, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve more days are left in the month of May. Now it's time to sing the Days of the Week song. Will you show me how many fingers we hold up for this next song? Seven. That's right. Because we have seven days in our week, we hold up seven fingers like this. Are you ready to sing? There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to travel down to the bottom of the chart and listen carefully for the sound that the day makes. This says that yesterday was t Tuesday. So that means that today is w Wednesday. And tomorrow will be th Thursday. Let's go back to today. And let's sing Today is Wednesday together. Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, all day long. 
Today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, today is Wednesday, all day long. And when we travel back up to the top of the chart, right up here we have the seasons. Do you know what the season is? Spring! It's springtime where I live, friends. And this week we've been talking all about farms during the springtime. But let's go back down to the bottom of the chart and let's sing the weather song together. Then we'll share what the weather is like. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? So it's another beautiful day where I live. Right now, the sun is shining. There are still a couple of cumulus clouds in the sky, but for the most part, it's mostly sunny. <gasps> Look at this, friends. My temperature chart is right between orange and red. It's supposed to be very, very warm today where I live. Not quite hot. It's supposed to be almost 80 degrees. So that's why I put it between orange and red. Pretty warm out today. Do you also have a warm day where you live? Have you been outside? Did it feel warm out? And what do you see outside of your window? Thanks for sharing with me. Now let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. So this week, we have been talking all about this letter. Can you make the sound for me? And now let's make that sound together. X, X. What is this letter called? X. This is a lowercase x. X says X, X. Okay, friends, I wonder what we'll find inside of the letter box today. This is something that has the letter X, X in the word. Here's your first clue. This is a male cow. This animal is also called a bull. Do you know the other name for a bull or a male cow? Your last clue is that this animal has long horns coming from the top of its head. Let's see. An ox. This animal is called an ox, which is short for oxen. The letter X, X is in the word ox and oxen. An ox or an oxen is a male bull and he has long horns coming from the top of its head. This is how you write a lowercase x, x. One more time. Now let's take a look at the number of the week. Do you remember what double digit number this is? 24, you're right. This is the number 24. Can you show me with your fingers what number you write first? Two. And then what number comes next? Four. Two, four. Twenty-four. Let me grab my piece of chalk and you can take something to write with so that we can draw 24 tally marks together. If not, you can just count them with me. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five goes across, six, seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen goes across, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty goes across, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and one more makes 24. 24 tally marks. 
I wonder what we'll find inside of the box to count today. On Wednesdays, we count these small rocks called pebbles. Let me gather them all up. I wonder if I can fit them all inside of one hand. Let's see. I almost have them all. And now we're ready to count. I'm going to make two rows of 10 pebbles and then the extra pebbles will go at the bottom. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One row of ten. Now let's start the second row of ten with eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That was the second row of ten, so we have ten, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Twenty-four pebbles. And now let's go over the sign of the week. This week we've been practicing how to say farm in sign language. Will you show me how? That's right, friends. Farm. Let's continue our discussion on farming in the springtime. This week we've learned that vegetable seeds are sown in the field once the ground is ready. But fruit and nut trees in bushes are planted a little differently, usually in an orchard. An orchard is a piece of land where fruit and nut trees and bushes grow. A farmer usually plants a fruit or a nut tree or a bush from a sapling or a baby tree rather than from a seed. Once the sapling grows up and the fruit tree is mature, it will grow a flower blossom in the springtime. The petals will fall off and a tiny fruit like a pear or an apple is left and then will grow through the summer. Let me show you what that looks like. So right here I have a little piece of a branch that I took from an apple tree that was growing in my orchard. As you can see this little branch has some green leaves and it also has these little white blossoms on the top. So some of the petals have already fallen off and once all of the little white petals are gone a tiny little fruit will begin to grow through the summer and then in the fall an apple will be ready to be picked. So depending on the type of fruit, it will be ready to pick or harvest in the summer or fall. Can you think of any fruit that grows in a tree? I can think of peaches and pears and apples. Now how about any fruit that comes from a bush? Can you think of any? What about blueberries and raspberries? Now, this is a trickier question. Can you think of any fruit that grows on a vine? Grapes grow on vines. So not only do farmers plant the saplings, they take care of the trees and the bushes, and then they harvest the crops once they're ready to eat. Let's move on to today's work. For today's work, you will need a child-friendly knife. I'm using this knife from Curious Chef. I really recommend these knives um, for children's use in the kitchen and I will link them in the description bo box below. You're going to need any type of fruit or vegetable as long as there are seeds inside of them and a magnifying glass. Today you are going to dissect your fruit or vegetable. When you dissect something, that means to take it apart. So I am choosing these apples to dissect. I'm going to take them apart using my Curious Chef knife and I will use my magnifying glass to look closer at anything that I find inside. So this apple came from a tree 
and I'm going to go ahead and use the knife. I'm going to make sure that the apple is face down like this. So the stem right here, this is where this was, the apple was once attached to a tree by the stem. The stem is facing up. With one of my hands, I'm going to take my fingers and wrap it around the handle of the knife right here. This part is the blade. This is the part that's going to cut the knife, so cut the apple. So you want to make sure that your hands and fingers are free. So with your other hand, you're going to hold the apple in place, bring the blade up to the top, and I'm just going to slice down. Look at this. Now the apple is in half. I can see the core, which is inside of the apple. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to use my magnifying glass. Wow. Do you see that little brown circle inside? That's what I was looking for, the seed. So I'm going to take my fingers and remove the seeds. Oh, here's another seed. Let's look under the magnifying glass again and see what it looks like. I don't see any more seeds. Not on this half of the apple. What about the other half? Do you see any seeds? There's one. So friends, if you are choosing a different fruit or vegetable to dissect, the inside is going to look different. The seeds will look different. And the fruit or vegetable will feel different. Now I cut this half in half again. So I have two more little halves right here. And I don't see any more seeds inside. If I cut this half in half, now I have quarters. One, two, three, four. And look at this. Do you see the other seed? Let's count how many seeds we found. One, two, three, four. Four seeds, and we cut the apple in quarters into one, two, three, four. Four pieces. How many pieces can you cut your fruit and vegetable into, and how many seeds do you think you'll find? Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. So after you finish dissecting your fruit or vegetable, make sure you don't forget to eat it. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a big thumbs up and be sure to find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Now it's time to sing our goodbye song together. Can you wave goodbye like this? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.